What is Eve Echoes? Is there a video out there that explains it all? Should you play it? What will the future bring? Now this is a general video that if you love space games and you have not played Eve Echoes, you don't want to miss this. Hey boys and girls, man and woman. Hey, Are you ready to know and learn everything good and bad about this game? It might be a lengthy video, but this video would be a great start for anyone, and a video where I will put my thoughts and hopes to test. I will not ask you to like and subscribe right now, but I will allude to that later in this video. And if you are still watching, that means I did a good job and probably deserve your like and your subscribe. And if I know how to add chapters below, I probably don't, but in that case I will add it so you can guide yourself to the juiciest fruit you want to bite into. Or just watch the whole thing and pat yourself on the back that you supported my hard work. You also don't want to miss if there is a giveaway embedded in this video. Don't worry, there's probably not. Eve Echoes is a beautiful space simulator on the phone that unlike a first person cockpit style game, you instead command a ship in third person. Here's a galaxy with over 8000 systems littered with planets, moons, stargates, stations, empty containers and places to explore. In this game you are immortal. Do not confuse that with Diablo Immortal, but humans have advanced the technology that gives us the ability to save our memory. Pretty much what Elon Musk is working on as we speak. So when you die, you lose your value, aka your ships and loot, but another clone is activated with your memory so you can continue. The game has a living market, even though it's declining, and the players find themselves to do different things in order to prosper. Check my over 14 videos on how to make ISK in EVE Echoes Doom Market if this is something you want to do. Mining, trading, building items and ships is the fundamentals in this game. But you also got PvP, PvE instances, war games and exploration. The game also have guilds that in this game is called corporations and several corporations can merge together to create an alliance. This alliance can fight over ownerships of areas of space and big wars will spark from this. You don't have to be in a big corporation or an alliance to play this game. You can of course be in a smaller corporation that do less active stuff as well. This is a game of friendship and rivalry. When you first start this game, the tutorials is key to success. Whatever stress you might have to start playing right now, it's only going to slow you down. You need to do the tutorials. You, you need to know that this is not a game where you just jump in and play. It's a lot deeper than that. And if you're not aware or do not do this part, you might just think that this game is crap and you will quit. Newsflash, it's not. The first hours is hard. You need to take it slow. Read stuff here and there. This is the first big issue with the E franchise. People think it's too hard or too much to know, but that's not really the whole story. While it is a lot to take in, doing the tutorials will let you understand the mechanics and prepare you for the game. So I can't stress this enough how important it is to take your time. I know we all feel like we want to start making some money in the games we start playing and the feeling of every second in the tutorial is wasting time. This is not the case in Eve Echoes. You're losing ISK if you don't do the tutorials. And you're actually making ISK watching this video. So do the tutorials and watch more of my videos. The most important thing when starting this game I would say is to start training skills. Your tutorials will show you but basically in this game your character trains skills in real time, even when you're offline. So get a few skills going. If you have not started this game yet, then download it now and train some skills and get back to this video after. This is not a gacha game. This is not a space shooter game. This is not a forex game. This game is something that will give you a feeling of accomplishment, ownership and value. Not saying it's unique, but it's only a few games that give you this entertainment, the feeling, the laughter the coordination, the sweaty palms. One other game that uses this style is the Albion Online, where any bad move can make you lose stuff you worked so hard for. So take your time and learn the basics. This game takes at least a year in real time to train all the skills and make you able to fly the biggest chips. And as long as you start your skilling queue, you can take your time learning the game without any stress. And no, the game does not start at Tech 10. The game starts on day one. There is no end game to get to. The game is all about the journey, and me and everyone else think that they would give us better login rewards though, cause these ones that we got now, they suck! Let's just go through all the buttons here quick and what they are and how they work, but if you already know them all, then jump to the time below. 
All right, this is the first screen. Click on your character to open up all these menus. The first one is your character. So you go in here and you can see your level, your Omega, your skill points, your wallet balance and your corporation. You also got the combat log. This is where you get your kill mails and your death mails. You also got medals. These are crap. Next one is fitting. Here is where you fit your ship. This is the high slots. This is the medium slots and this is the low slots. If you click on a low slot, for example, Everything you have in that station that fits there will be visible in this one. Now if you click on the middle slot, you will see everything that can fit on here. Below there, you got the nano core. Here you can see your level of your nano core. You can also see what you can expect if you train it up even more. If you click on appearances, you can here select your colors for your nano core and your ship. Also below there, you got your skins. Now if you have active skins, it will be visible here and you can actually click that and use it for your nano cores if you want to change the colors of your skin instead of your nano core. Now to the right you see your DPS, you can see where your DPS is coming from, you can see your defense, this is the shield, armor and structure and you can see the corresponding resistance. Now if you want to check your resistance on your ship, it is important to activate your red hardeners before you look at this screen, otherwise it will not show up in the resistance. You also got the capacitator, here you can see how long your ship will be active and you can also see how many gigajoules and how many seconds it takes to recharge. You also got targeting, the only thing interesting here is to see your targeting signature radius and of course your scan resolution which is how fast you can lock ships. Below here you got the navigation, you see your warp speed, warp preparation time and your speed for your ship. Next one is wallet. This is something that I don't need to explain. And that is your corporation disk. This is the market. On the right you see your orders. You can click on my orders and you can see everything that you're selling. You can also click and see your buy orders if you have any. On the left side here you can browse to find whatever you would like to buy. So for example if you want to buy a Bantam you can either buy it straight off here or you can click here and place a buy order. That way someone can sell to you directly. Next one is contract. Don't use this shit unless you really have to. The skill tab. This is your skills. Some people have it like this but I don't. I have it like this because then I see everything in front of me and I can click on whatever I would like to train. Below here you got your training queue but if you take 10 and you dual omega you save every skill points so you don't have to actually train anything so just allocate them here. You gotta videotape it next time so I can see. You also got a reset button here. Here you can reset and reallocate your skills if you have Lazarus points enough. You got the implants tab. If you're not T10, you should click away. If you are T10, you probably know what this is. This is the pay to win in this game and I fucking hate it. Then you got your inventory slot here. You got your item hangar. You got your ship hangar in this station. And then you also got your ship that you're currently sitting in. Below here you got the corp delivery. This is where you can get stuff from the corporation. Pretty nifty. If you click below there, you will open up all your assets. This is all the stations that you have items in. So you can just click on one and you can see what you have. And you can, if you want, set destination down here at where it says 41 jumps. Deliveries are broken and boring. And I don't want to go through that. You got the nest door. This is also broken and boring. And it's also expensive. You get your Concord Pass. I'm always buying this one. Because here you can get your nano course that you so much need. You get your star shard. This is where you can see everything. Where everyone lives or corporation or alliances and you can set your whatever you want to look at here like security stations interstellar trading centers or whatever but what's good with it is that you can zoom in and you can for example say yeah i want to go here you can click on that one and you can set destination and then you can start moving you don't have to use the autopilot i will show you how that works later you can do it manually too but you can still have the destination next one is the encounters in that you got news, story and tutorials. Tutorials you should be doing. The news is where you can refresh new missions to do. Every hour? 30 minutes? I can't remember. But here is where you find that. So if you browse through, there is nothing fun going on here. But if I refresh, you can see I got a purple one. And maybe we get a yellow one. No, we didn't. So the purple one are often special ones that you can do. Which can give a little bit better loot if you're lucky. But if you get a yellow one and you keep doing those, you will actually be able to go into story. Here you can see that on the bad hair day, I got everyone except this last one. So I just need to find the last one in the news site. So I need to get this one here. When I have this whole constellation, I can get a story mission paper where I can actually do the story mission. We got the event tab. This is where you should be looking every day. You got your login rewards. You got other bunch of stuff and the lucky draw that you see here that made me lose about 8 billion but it was worth it then you got industry 
For more information about industry, go and check more videos. But over here, you can invent, for example, nanocores or implants or items. Down here, you can build stuff. The planetary production. I stopped doing this two years ago, but if you want a video on how it works, you can let me know in the comments. Then you got the corporation. This is your corporation, if you're in it. So you can just apply if you want to join mine. Otherwise, this is the corporation that you're in right now. Or if you don't have a corporation, then this page would put you into a find a corporation page or whatever. So then you can find a good corporation. A good corporation is very important, so don't waste that. You also got your fleet tab. This is where you search for fleets and create fleets. So click on create fleet and then you can choose what type of fleet you want to make and just create it and invite people. Here is your contact list, which is pretty much your friends or your foes. Depends on who you want to add. You also got the ship tree. This is pretty much all the ships in the game. It's not really everyone, but you know, you can just click on whatever and browse through what kind of ships you would like to have in the future. So you can click on the Raven Striker and you can see every stats of it. You can see what type of skills you need for it here. And you can click on this one to get even more information about the ships. The setting is pretty self-explanatory. Now on the right side here, you got Faction War Games. This is where you sign up inside a station to do PvP. There are two active right now, Faction War Games Shattered Belts, which is, uh, I think we're 5 or 10 versus 10, and it's very good for new players. Then we also got the Ego Traverse, which is PvP one on one. You got the Arcana Museum, which is pretty crap. It was good back in the day, but you know, do whatever. And if you look at the text down here, this is the chat. You can apply what kind of groups you want to be in, or you can just be in the one that you have already. And if you click down here, you can see who is in the system. Beside that, you got your mails or your notifications. And beside that, you can actually decide what type of filters you would like to have. Now let's go outside. Now we're outside. The first thing I would like you to do is stop your engines. It is on this button down here. Because I don't want to move around now. A very important thing is that you go to settings. This you have to do in the beginning of the game. You go to battle settings and you go all the way down to tactical overlay and you have that on. I will show you what that is soon. Now something else I would do is to have auto attack the next target on, automatic lockback off and auto orbit target off. That is the most important thing. Now as we're in space I will show you the tactical overlay. If I zoom out I get the tactical overlay. This is so I can see where everyone is and how fast they move. Now what you do in space when you move around is you actually double click in space. This is how you move around. If I want to go this way, I double click over here. If I want to go down, I double click like this. What you also can do is click in space on for example a planet and I can warp to it. What you also can do is actually click on this eye over here. And here you can also set destination and decide if you want to warp or jump. Up here you can change this into whatever you would like to have and you do that over here on the filter settings. Mix and match that until you're happy. Down here is your fitting. You can move that around as much as you like. The little ship with a 7 is my implant. Now you can click on this button up here and some ships have even more slots so you can spread this out and put it wherever you would like to have it. Now if you look at the blue screen in the bottom you can see that is the ship that I have. Around it you get three gray bars. The outer bar is your shield. The inner bar is your armor and the innerst, innerst bar is your hull. The blue one is your cap or capacitator. Now if you look below where I said stop your ship, it's a little square. Here you can hide your interface for nice images, but you can also screenshot down here. I would never do that. Now you can see the arrow and you can see that I have Yeet as a destination. If you click on it, this is your autopilot. You can set it to prefer shorter, safer or less safe on the navigation. And below here, you see I put a Yeet as an avoidance list, so I do not warp to Yeet unless I do it manually. So if you have systems on the avoidance list, your ship will actually go around it. You can also click on the image and you can see all the systems that you will pass. Well, that was it. Man, that was boring. Let's talk money. ISK is the money in game. It stands for interstellar space credits and are what you buy and trade with, mainly. When you kill NPCs in the game, you will get ISK. When you sell stuff on the market, you will get ISK. When you gamble within the game, you will lose ISK. Watching my videos will make you earn ISK and protect your ISK. Should I stop referring to my videos now? Yes. Except buying items and ships and skill with your ISK, you can also buy something called Plex. This is a pilot license extension. And with those, you can activate something called the Omega Clone. The Omega Clone you can also buy with something called AUR. This is the currency you buy with real money. As a new player, you start as an Alpha Clone. 
This is the basic loan that you always have and this is what you might want to upgrade in time. When you upgrade your Alpha clone to an Omega clone, you will train your skills faster and be able to fly more ships or buy more ships that you then can fly. And buying this clone demands Plex. Check in-game store to see prices. You can, as I said, also pay real money for the AUR that you convert to Plex that you then use to activate your Omega. But if you do good in the game, you can sustain the Omega with the in-game ISK. This is what I do. And I would do a lot better if I didn't have giveaways all the time. <laughs> Man, these videos get out of hand. Let's start with something fun. There is over 300 ships in this game, so there is guaranteed a few that you will fall for. And one of them will most likely be your first love. Tell me in the comment what ship that was, but do not tell your wife, your husband, girlfriend, boyfriend. I wouldn't even tell my pet. The ships all have different basic stats, but you can use whatever items you like as long as they fit to make your ship behave the way you like to. This is called fitting a ship. And as you play this game, people will always correct your fits, even people who don't know anything. In EVE Echoes, there is small to big ships. Frigates, cruisers, battlecruisers, battleships and capital ships as of now. Ships also got different specialities such as DPS, tanking, speed as well as scanning, remote repairing and more. We got command ship, logistics ships and haulers, mining and freighter ships. So the ships you buy is yours and you can own them all. But bigger is not always better. <laughs> I keep telling my wife that. And when you die with your ships, you will lose some items and you will have to pay a fee to get it back. That fee is called insurance. And insurance is something you buy that covers the ship that you lose. So as long as you have enough insurance points, you can reclaim your lost ship. If you unfortunately didn't have enough insurance, it's going to be quite expensive to get it back. So you are basically better off just buying a new one for the full price. Most ships have bonuses to different modules that could be clever to match. But it's not something you have to do. And the items are either offensive or defensive. The items are fitted into different slots on the ship. So you can't mix anything, but it's quite flexible. So except the weapons, the resistances, the bonuses, the repairers, we also got webbers, scramblers, disruptors and neutralizers, and speed modules and more. I suggest you check them out. As I say, you got time. We also got nanocores that once you get one, will improve the ships as well as letting you recolor the appearance. You mainly get nanocores doing the Concorde Pass and buying it with the Concorde Points. There is also skins for the ships as well as other trinkets that you will eventually get the hang on. And now we also got implants in the game. See implants as a bonus that you can activate to get more power for a short time. They are very expensive, at least today, but are well worth the grind to get. Just know that grinding for this takes a long time, so make sure that you get the ones you need. And I would not focus on this until I'm at least T10. There's also ships that you can put in your head that will let you train your skills even faster. You can read more about all of this in the store too. Space is big. And so is this game. You will move between stars through stargates. And every star system have planets, stations and stuff to do. There is also a security level in every system. 1.0 is the safest security and minus 1.0 is the lowest security. 1.0 to 0.4 is what we call high sec. Here you are totally safe from other players. They cannot hurt you in any way. 0.3 and 0.1 is called low sec. This is less secure and you might lose your ship unless you know what to do. But stay close to stargates and MPC stations makes you pretty safe. Because they got sentry guns that will protect you if you get attacked. 0.0 to minus 1.0 is the nullsec. Here is a space where you can and will be attacked anywhere. This is also where Alliance claims sovereignty to own pieces of space. Out here some parts of space are NPC pirate owned. So here you can find some free stations to dock at. If you're out roaming yourself or need a break. In Nullsec are of course the best minerals to mine as well as the best NPC pirates to hunt down for ASK and items. In EVE Echoes we also got Autopilot that will move you to the destination even if you log off. Just make sure that you're not moving through low sec or no sec. This is for your own good. Let's talk about PvE. This game revolves around ISK and the ISK has to initially come from somewhere and that is encounters and PvE grinds. Encounters are, let's say, hidden anomalies that you will be assigned to clear out by an agent. 
Encounters can be set from difficulty check level 1 to 10. Do not mix this up with your check level, since you can do T10 encounters in a T7 or even a T6 ship, but you need the skills and the knowledge to do so. The levels on encounters are just a guideline. Refreshing your encounters can give you some special encounters that if you collect them all, you can get a story mission. All those missions are presented with a yellow dot on the encounter page. And the story missions are a lot harder to do. Evac has also got events now and then that will let the game spawn some special encounters here for you to clear too. Another thing you can do as PvE is of course to fly around and find some anomalies yourself. Or fit a scanner and scan the hidden ones. The higher number they got, the harder they are. And the deeper into lower security space, the harder anomalies can spawn. Remember that in low sec and below, people can scan you down and try to kill you. In no sec is of course the best anomalies, such as dead space and stuff, but the idea is the same. You go in, you nuke the NPC as fast as you can to get the higher check. Now check is the name for the ISK income each 15 or 20 minutes. And also remember that fleeting up with others makes some stuff a lot easier, so don't be afraid to ask your friends out to help. But don't just join random fleets cause it might be a trap to kill you. Especially in dormant realms. Man that was interesting, let's talk about something else. Mining is the other big income in this game. You either mine for the minerals, to be able to build cheaper ships, or you sell the minerals to the market. Most corporations that you're in will have a buyback program that make you be able to sell your minerals at the spot, pretty much where you are. This way, you don't have to spend the time hauling it to, for example, Hida to sell it. And mining in this game starts slow. You start in Adventure, then you jump into Adventure 2, and then Adventure 3 and so on. This is small frigate class ships that once you target an asteroid, you can then shoot it with the mining lasers to extract the minerals. But the best is to move into strip mining early. The strip miners are fitted into mining barges. These ships are retrievers, procurers and coveters. This mining ship uses a simpler way to extract the minerals. All you need to do is to be close enough to the asteroids and upon activating the strip miners, they randomly mine from anything that is nearby. For the big miners in this game you got the drone version called Orca. This ship mines with drones as well as boosts others with mining speeds and more. And then for the richest miners there is the Rokwa, the biggest mining platform in EVE Echoes to date. The deeper and low sec you mine, the better ore, but also the more danger to be found and killed. Speaking of being killed. This is a PvP game. You can live in peace in high sec, but there's always enemies around you. Even in high sec you can lose your stuff to something we call scammers. Scamming is fair use in this game. So be sure not to be tricked by people, cause that could be an expensive lesson. And the whole game is filled with pirates, scammers, industrialists, traders, captains, commanders, scallywags, friends and foes and good old landlubbers. And everyone got their agenda they work towards. So even if you're just minding your own business, there's always eyes on you that will strike when you step the wrong way. So far, there's no ability to start war within high sec, but in the future, I'm sure it will be possible. In strict manners, of course. But PvP in EVE Echoes is a mix of ship types, what fitting you have versus what ship and fitting that you meet. In general, bigger ship takes down smaller ones, but it's definitely not always the case. There are ways to build smaller ships able to fight bigger ships. And if you fly a bigger ship fitted for other bigger ships, that smaller ship might give you trouble. But also that small ship will be in trouble if it meets another small ship fitted for small ships. So you will always have a good time trying to build different fits for different occasions and just await the perfect strike. Or you will build the most versatile ship and see how far that gets you. Cause PvP happens everywhere from low sec to null sec. And you can also do PvP in faction warfare and the DIR challenges that you enter from your station. So how can you get the edge? This game have a few rules that you obey or you don't. You may use several accounts and multiboxing the game, but botting is not okay. You may scam others in this game, but real money trading is not okay. When you kill someone or getting killed, it is nice to write good fight in the local chat, but it's not mandatory. Harassment within the game and outside the game is not okay, but trash talk is. Unless you know the person, borrowing is the same as stealing. Don't ever fly a ship that you can't afford to lose or replace. And always try to kill people who fly those ships. Watching a sheep's content is mandatory. 
but donations on the stream isn't. And in this game you need to set your own goals, cause the game just throw you out in the universe without any real direction. So should you play this game? If you're thinking about playing this game you might want to know about what's in store for the future. Well, so do we. It is very hard to say what the future brings, since NetEase ain't the most open book in the library, but I would say what I honestly think will happen regards to improvements, updates, general changes and what we can expect as a lifespan of this game. So here goes. The improvements we will see is the limitations of disconnects, lag and overall general server stability. This will be better in time, and it was very bad back in the day. More ships will be introduced in this game. The longer the game will run, the more ships from EVE Online will be present for us to claim. Netties are testing stuff that we don't see all the time. But if you pay attention to it, you will see that it is to get us more areas to explore. The DIR, the Ego, the War Games, these are just ways for them to create new static events for the game in the future. I would not be surprised if we get the tournaments in the future as well. We will see the drone lands opening, as well as the wormholes. There will be more capital ships as well as titans in the future. And of course, more faction stuff, such as ships, stations and modules. And talking about modules, prices will definitely change. The meta will not be C-type, but more like faction modules. And modules will go up in price. Market will be overhauled and made better. In regards to player owned stuff, we most likely will see stations in high sec as well as more deployable stuff, and factions and officer spawns will also be a thing. The insurance will see some changes, but I can't say what changes that will be, but it will be for the better, that much I know. This game is not something that will die just like that, but it is rooted in what changes they will do. And yes, netties are bad at listening to us, but now and then they do hear us, and in time we will find ourselves in a game that exceeds new player expectations and capturing their attentions. We old schools in the game will be harder to cater, so I think they should step that up. I can see this game going for at least 5 more years, but if it changed enough, it can live for at least 10 more years. But then we probably play in holograms or at least VR through our phones. But then, if you're still playing, you will know that you were a part of those who helped change and save this game. And for your information, if you're interested, that I am looking into some other games as well for this channel, I will be looking at Deliver Us Mars, Axiom, Telltale's The Expanse and the Dead Space Remake. This is just a few games that I will cover on my channel, so leave a like and subscribe if you want to know when I release those. So fly safe, aggressive and with a smile, and I see you again.